guys, I'm Nick, aka The One Only Nick's Games, and today I wanted to talk to you guys about whether or not you should build a gaming PC. So as you may or may not know, I recently built a gaming PC myself, and I quite love it. It is an amazing, amazing machine, and I would recommend it for most people, but there are some people I wouldn't. So let's go ahead and discuss whether or not you should get a gaming PC. So first off, I want to talk about the price of PC gaming. I've seen people before say it is more expensive to game on a PC than it is on a console. And I've quickly realized as a PC gamer that is simply not true. On console, sure, your initial cost is going to be a lot smaller. Sure, it's going to cost you $400 to get your first console, to get your Xbox One it's probably going to cost you $400, and that's going to come with a game. So, you know, there you have it. You, you've already got one more game than on the PC, and guess what? You've already got your console, too. But, on the PC, you get on Steam, and there are 20 games on sale right there that you can now buy, play, and have a ton of fun with, probably for about $100. So, for what it would have cost you to buy, like, one new Xbox game and one used Xbox game, you have gotten 20 games on Steam, on sale, and they're simply amazing. In addition to that, there's Humble Bundle, HumbleBundle.com, an amazing, amazing service where you can go and literally buy games 80, 90% off and buy huge bundles of like indie games and sometimes even AAA titles. They did a bundle with EA last year that literally you can pay $1 and get 10 amazing, amazing games. That is something that is non-existent on consoles, and I've learned that really, really quickly, you can make up any cost that you lost buying a gaming PC initially quickly on the games. If you compare the same amount of price you would spend on games on a console versus what you'll spend on them on a PC, you'll quickly find that if you play a lot of games, if you buy a lot of games, within two years, your PC will easily catch and probably pass your gaming PC's cost, depending on how much you bought bought it for. Now, please remember that I am going off of a $1,000 gaming PC build here, and uh, that's about middle of the road for most general gamers who just want general use. Mine costed $500 more than that because I wanted to up my graphics card to be able to do uh, intense video rendering while still being able to use it and, and even play games while it's rendering. So I wanted to do that, so it might cost a little bit more, but most general gaming PC use you can easily build a build for $1,000, if not less. So quickly, the cost will catch that $1,000 if you buy the new games on console versus buying them on PC, and they will meet together, and uh, eventually the PC will pass it. Within my estimations, about two years, and I've seen that everywhere online as well in my research for this video, most people say within two years, you will make up for what you lost for the initial cost of buying a PC if you bought the exact same games you buy on the PC on the console, Two years, you're going to be breaking more than even most of the time. Sometimes just even at least. So, um, nevertheless, that is the price aspect of PC gaming. And I wanted to knock that out of the park real quick because uh, that's basically the biggest argument. I love console gaming and I love PC gaming. And uh, at the end of the day, they're both great. And I would say that as far as price goes, PC gaming is going to, in the long run, be more affordable, but in the short term, PC gaming is going to cost you a whole lot more. Next, I want to talk about something that I've heard a lot of people say about PC gaming and one reason they would not get into it. That reason is the fact that they can't get over having to use a keyboard and mouse. They're afraid it'll be hard for them to use a keyboard and mouse. They're afraid it'll be difficult for them to actually take and use a keyboard and mouse and get used to that whole process. And I was honestly afraid of that at first as well. I was very afraid when I first started PC gaming that it would be extremely hard for me to get the controls down, to be able to use a mouse to shoot on FPS games, and be able to use the keyboard to run and jump on all that stuff and all the different keyboard commands. I thought that would be hard. Honestly, I have had very few issues with having to figure out controls. It's about like if you buy a brand new console game. You have to figure things out in the controls before you can start doing well or start getting there. It took me a few matches on Team Fortress 2 before I was able to figure out the controls and start doing decently, at least barely going positive, right? About average or just below average. And so that's, that's how long it took me to get the controls. It's not that hard to pick up things. And you can do it. In addition to that, a lot of indie games will allow you to use a wired Xbox controller to play them. And they're going to be just as fun with a PC keyboard as they are with an Xbox controller. And they give you both options for that reason. So, the whole controller keyboard thing, while it does seem a bit daunting at first, 
is easy to overcome. And what I would actually recommend doing is if you do have a PC that can run even like Minecraft on low settings or an indie game that came out, you know, a year or two years ago that you could easily run, buy that and get used to the control. See what you think about it. And if you don't like it, then go ahead. Don't buy a gaming PC. The console is where you want to go for. But... If you do and you're like, I could get used to this, it's not terrible, then maybe you should consider getting a PC and uh, that would be one of the instances where, yeah, you know, go for it, get it, see what happens if, uh, if you got the money for it and all that stuff. Now there's one more thing I wanted to talk about when it comes to building a gaming PC. Now. The thing I said there was a building a gaming PC. This isn't something that a lot of people have issues with if they have it buy a gaming PC through Dell, for example. They're now selling gaming PCs or buy an Alienware laptop. Even though those are outrageously overpriced, they are, you know, viable options if you don't want to build a computer yourself. However, what I'm talking about for the next minute, two minutes here, is building a PC yourself, which is what I actually did. The thing about building a PC yourself is you might go completely perfect and not have any issues whatsoever. Or you could have a ton of issues and it might take you six months to get your build up and running. Now I don't want to scare you away from buying a PC for that reason. That's why you want to use dealers that you know have really good return policies. I would recommend Amazon. Some people would say Newegg. I've had problems with Newegg in the past but that's not here nor there. I would just recommend that before you build a gaming PC, make sure you watch a lot of videos, make sure you understand exactly what you need to do, and don't overcomplicate things. My PC has the stock Intel cooler on it. <gasps> I went with the stock Intel cooler because it was my first PC build ever. I don't plan on overclocking, and there's no reason to overcomplicate things when it comes to building your first PC. It should be a simple thing. It's not that hard, but you have to be careful and you have to just take your time with it. And if I overcomplicated things with a non-stock cooler, it literally could have ended up ruining me. So, I didn't do that. I also want to mention that I did have trouble with my first build. I was sent a DOA motherboard, a dead on arrival motherboard, and it took some time to get that replaced and I had to use a little bit of my online social media power to get it replaced and that's my one problem I've had with Newegg but at the same time it was replaced I rebuilt the PC and as you can see it is working minus the fact it went to sleep so yeah see it's working and uh I absolutely love it. So, there you guys have it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Basically, what I'm saying, if the price is holding you back from getting a gaming PC and that's it, and you think it's more affordable to get a console, that's simply not true. Plus, on a PC, not only can you game on it, you can do a whole lot more. And um, so, that, that, that argument, in my opinion, isn't really that valid and shouldn't be really, truly addressed. It's going to even itself out, and gaming, PC gaming is worth the price that you pay for it at first and then it bounces out. Also, if you think you might not like the mouse and keyboard, buy a cheap indie game that your PC will run and see if you like it or not. If you don't have a problem with it when you're using it, then boom, there you go. Go ahead and start PC gaming. If not, then maybe you want to stick to console and, and keep on rocking on with your Xbox. You know, that's, that's completely fine, but don't use that as an excuse. Try it and see if you like it. If you do, then, you know, maybe a PC gaming is, is a place for you. And last but not least, building a PC is something you really need to think about. While there are awesome options out there like iBuyPowerPC and even Alienware, you have to be careful when you're building a PC and make sure that you know exactly what you're going into. Make sure you use retailers that are written to work with you if uh, they do send you a bad product or something like that. And just be cautious and take your time when you are building it. And make sure you do your research before you do so. And uh, you should be fine. So, while building a PC can be scary, it's not that bad. Nevertheless, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I helped you in deciding whether or not you should get a gaming PC or just keep playing on console. Let me know in the comment section down below if you think you should PC game or not. And if PC gaming is your thing. I'm Nix Games, and I'm out, guys. Peace. And here's some videos you guys might want to go check out. On the left is actually my PC speed build where you can watch me build my entire PC in four minutes using time lapse and all that awesome stuff. Go check it out. I think it's a really cool video. And on the right is how to install Forge and too many items in Minecraft 1.7.2. So if you want to know how to install both of those mods in Minecraft, go check out that video. Also check out my daily vlogs at the bottom center of your screen where you can see what I'm up to every single day of my life. Life. Anyway guys, I'm Nick's Games and I'm out. Peace.